Hello everyone, it's Selena and Marissa and this is Abundance of Hope's Just Look Vlog. Today we're going to be talking about the King County Executive Budget um, Zoom conference and just kind of giving our reactions and our thoughts uh, as Black-led organizers who got our boots on the ground every single day serving our community. Yes. To clarify, um, this is the Zoom conference with uh, King County Executive Dow Constantine. It had the um, King County Prosecutor Dan Satterberg, um, and then there was some lady named Patty or something or other. Um, well, there are a couple other people who spoke. I'm not, yeah, um, and a few others. But, so this is just kind of our reactions i guess yeah. it was so it was so lackluster like the entirety of it all um just watching dow constantine regurgitate these words that you know he didn't write and that he clearly doesn't believe or he would have literally stepped down from that position a long time ago um because it's inappropriate for him to even be in a leadership position <clears throat> um also and it was just like that, was, yeah, like that was my most reaction like what i'm so tired of hearing white people and it's always like a group of majority white people telling me that they're just like learning <sighs> they're figuring out how to not be racist they're figuring out how to like see black communities as human and how to like right. engage with them in ways that aren't inherently violent like they're figuring all that out and like as soon as they do you know, our people will stop dying at disproportionate right. rates. We'll stop being disproportionately um, unemployed. We'll, st you know, what I mean, we'll yeah. stop being disproportionately represented in their jails. Right. Like, it was actually quite insulting to hear them say these words that literally black people have been. First of all, telling white people forever. Shocker! We've been doing all these things. We've been known that heavy policing is not beneficial to our community it's we've expensive. been knowing exactly we've More been expensive knowing than helping us. that we need to work this focus on preventative methods Marissa, and a person first i approach. heard this the fucking um let me not i heard the uh prosecutor say that like they're figuring out how to like make it a job to like help youth instead of crip like, along, like how something is that along not those words, like we can make this a career i'm like what what well to me that's actually <sighs> um it's eye-opening because but finally they're, he's they're admitting now that their entire stance has been violence to the community and not any actual help you know what i mean like there's the serve and protect of police but clearly you're not serving clearly you're not protecting um and then like for me it was like really inappropriate that these are decision makers it's really inappropriate that they're in positions where their policies that they put in place, the budget that he proposes, directly affects the black community so much and communities of color so much. And who are the decision makers? They don't look like us. They have no urgency. They have, exactly. They're not invested in the issues or they would have been saying this two and three decades ago like the other people who have been saying it. Like the No Use Jail Initiative, that whole fight has been taken on for what, almost 15 years? 15 years, I think, they've been fighting for this. And now you're just now, oh yeah, that's a good idea. We're going to turn the bottom floor into black. Like, listen to black people listen to the black leadership listen to the black organizations because if they were listening to the black organizations and black leadership these issues would have been solved well my like, thing is like they just ridiculous. told us the same story that we heard three like i like since we came on the scene <laughs> no because i am laughing to not cry yeah, like literally this is ridiculous. so ridiculous when we came on the scene we were hearing the same stuff like oh what, what how do we get ahead of these things remember in that we need to start um centering you know people who are on the ground they were saying movements. that remember that one table that one table bullshit they were doing yeah. um it went to that meeting yes okay and jenny was there, jenny durkin was there and fucking dow constantine is there and they're like yeah uh we need to work on equity and again a bunch of white people sitting here talking about equity what the fuck do y'all know about equity right follow black leadership lean it's like literally so they're sitting here talking about equity and she's talking about this uh 
you know ongoing search and never ending search for for holistic youth programming and then like at that very same meeting i kid you not we literally walked up to jenny durkin and was like hi we have a bunch of open center we are black founded we literally do homelessness prevention services for at-risk with youth. holistic methods like holistic, holistic homelessness prevention like it's in services. the mission statement i personally i personally walked up to jenny durkin at the one table meeting and dal constantine was there so and told like, her and she was like yeah like get a meeting with you know my let's office let's get your loop in they have to tell you yeah. to get let's get your loop in <laughs> for what so y'all can be lackluster, not listen to us, not fund the initiatives we're telling you. Oh my god. For what? They always they want to loop you into loop something. Us into serving our community. <laughs> like, what? like what are y'all talking about? It's too much. Like literally I am laughing to not cry because of how frustrated I am and how tired I am of listening to majority white people who really have no stakes in my community. And they're, they're not, not losing you. nothing. They're not waking up in tears because more and more people in my community are dying of avoidable deaths. That's not anything that they feel. They're not connected to that. Exactly. And then they sit at these meetings and tell us, yes, black people are heavily criminalized in our community. Black mm -hmm. people are There's all this structural racism. Yeah. I love how they talk about structural racism. Like, like y'all are the structural are racism. The structural racism, literally. The structural racism is you, Don Constantine, over here in my face, regurgitating some words that we know you didn't write, that we know isn't landing for you, that you don't really believe in, and you're sitting here telling us some stuff that we actually, we also actually already know. What I didn't been hear, saying. what I didn't hear was any ways in which they're actually in a way that they can be held accountable, right. gonna be rerouting these funds that they admittedly said themselves they've been putting all this money into policing and criminalizing right. our community. Just blase, you know, we've just been contributing to contributing to the criminalization and uh, systemic oppression of black people here, right, in King County. But we just now realized, you know, someone told right. us like last year that that wasn't cool. And so now we're, you know, going to try to figure out how to, you know, humanize you guys through our policies. And we're totally figuring that out. So just hold up. Like what in the world? People are dying. Our right. people are dying. Black and brown people are dying. Indigenous people are dying. Dying. Our lives are being prematurely cut short by these systems and there is no sense of urgency there's no real plan to uplift no. actual black movements like there's they don't need to run around blindly uh searching for holistic homelessness it prevention it's here you don't need to look around blindly searching for solutions how can we help the black community you don't need to the black community is helping themselves help us help ourselves the stop giving money to organizations that say they're working with bipoc communities and give the money to bipoc communities like literally that's that's literally what it is um capital right y'all make capital off of our people you make capital off the backs of black and brown communities you need to shift capital back into the hands of black and brown communities that is how you do your restorative justice that is how you um address these systems of inequality if that's what you're wondering yep. jenny and dow look i just did it your job for you for free reroute money into black and brown communities hands that's it we're already here Here's serving our people. I want to get y'all looped into something, right? <laughs> God. Dan Satterberg should not be the prosecutor. Clearly, right? We know there's this ingrained bias. It's in the police officers. It's in the judges. It's in the prosecutors. Step down from your position, Dan Satterberg, because you're not qualified to be in it. Step down, Dow. Step down, Jay. Step down from your position, Patty, because you're not qualified to be in it. Step down from your position, Dow, because you're not qualified to be in it, period. If you don't have an investment in actually breaking down these systems of inequality, here's your number one step. Step down from your position and give it to a person of color, namely a black person, that will actually do it right because we actually have investments in the solutions of our community. We have investments, we know how to do it. We've never known, we've never not known how to serve our communities. It's y'all who are always having to play catch up, talking about a person-centered approach. Did we not say that three years ago? We stepped on the scene. With no you jail 15 years ago, not talking about how heavy policing and incarceration is not what our youth need. 
I know Lo Yuzo was talking about. I heard him. Exactly. <laughs> for right. a long time. And we haven't even been here for the length of time that they've been fighting this fight. Why was there not anyone at the table who brought that information to y'all? Literally. Right? Because then we wouldn't have to regurgitate words that someone else wrote for us, right? We would already know because it's in us. We see right. it. We experience it every day. But instead, they're comfortable. We see in our own families how this is affecting our communities. But instead, they're just comfortable taking all the time they need to all learn the time, how all black the space. people... They're like, okay, so black people they're finding out are human black people they're finding oh out God. may or may not be personally responsible for the systems of inequality that their people set up they're finding out that black people know how to work together whoa like right? like yeah yeah and while y'all taking all this time to figure it out We've you're literally killing our out. people literally and making it harder for us to serve our people way harder for putting us to out serve grants that y'all know y'all ain't gonna give to black people one percent like literally it came out like that hasn't changed yeah they said 2.8 percent i think and it was for black and people of color all together only get 2.8 percent of grants and funding. right so maybe like, here's what? another thing gatekeepers grant writers get used to not funding white-led organizations Look. get comfortable with it get comfortable looking at a spreadsheet and seeing that the mo majority of your money is going into the hands of the black and brown communities around you get comfortable with that and don't think it, it feels weird don't be like oh well well, well, yeah, white people don't know how to serve black and brown communities. Okay? Period, we, none period, of us need period, to be, period. none of us, we don't need to do another leadership. study on that. We don't need to have another conversation on the topic. You don't know what you're doing. Step back. But there are studies. Okay, I know. I'm there saying we don't one. need to do another one. Oh, Though, abundance of hope, you know, we're actually trying to do a study on, you know, service providers. So if you are someone who's connected to social research in a way, do contact us. Um, yes, exactly. But yeah, so it's like there, there's, there's more work that needs to be done. There are more surveys. There's more research that needs to be done. Absolutely. But it doesn't need to be done through a white lens. Like you don't, we don't need to do it specifically not with white leadership. And, and issues of not to serve justice. my community. Thank you. And like, issues of social just justice, equity should not have white humanity. leadership. Okay. Should not have white leadership. It's extremely inappropriate. And that's just my biggest reaction. Like I was exhausted. Just it was only a forty-five minute Zoom, and I was so exhausted by the end yeah, of it. I was just like, it like wind out of my sails. Just like this is our this leadership. is what I'm working against. This is yep. systemically trying to be a nonprofit that prioritizes black and brown communities. Like we literally, it's almost like the system is working against us when just to serve our community. Like it's. Uh, I'm, it's exhausting. I don't got nothing more to say. It's about quite it. exhausting. Um, so if y'all haven't watched that shit show, we'll um, post the link below. Yeah, cause like, and then they were talking about like the metro bus system, mm -hmm. and don't even get me started on um, the how racist on their great plans for for that. So yeah, it's just a, uh, it's a lot. Watch the video. Um, but also I want to say that we really do need to be watching videos like this we need to be showing up to meetings like that because we need to be holding them accountable to the shit that they're saying yeah they've pledged money to bipoc communities which means now black, constantine we are watching wait, wait, i'm expecting a check for abundance of hope. black and indigenous <laughs> people of bring color it all the way back because that's what by black indigenous people of color is what y'all are saying you're gonna give this money to Yes, yeah, so we are watching, we are waiting. I just know Abundance of Hope Center is going to receive a check in the mail. I know Arms Around You is going to be receiving a check in the mail. I know Community Passageways is going to be getting more. Choose 180, No You Jail, Credible King Messenger, now, Prince, all the amazing <laughs> like, BIPOC. Black, ele uh, Black Elephant Party, like the list goes on and on. I know, we'll all, y'all, yeah, we all going to be receiving some checks in the mail. Okay. So look out for them checks. Now we holding you accountable for them checks, okay? Period. Period. <laughs> and that is all. And that's it and that's all.